We're back at 739. It was the phone call every mother dreads. It's really unthinkable and one that changed Sharon Roach's life forever. On December 24, 2002, her son-in-law, Scott Peterson, called to say that her daughter Lacey, nearly eight months pregnant, was missing, prompting a nationwide search. But when the bodies of both Lacey and her unborn son, Connor, were found four months later, Lacey's husband, Scott, was charged with murder. He was eventually convicted and sentenced to death. Now in a new book for Lacey, a mother's story of love, loss, and justice, Sharon Rocha vividly describes her unspeakable grief and finally gives her daughter a voice. Sharon, good morning. Good to good. see you as always. Good morning, Katie. You know, I know this was your third Christmas without Lacey, and as I sat down to talk with you, I thought, this must be such a painful time of year for you. And this Christmas, I know, was almost in some ways more difficult than any other. It was. Why? It was. Um, I can only guess that maybe because the first two Christmases we were in trial with the, we were busy with the prelim and then the trial and this year we're just not quite as busy. And of course the very to... first Christmas was sp spent frantically searching for Lacey and trying to understand that's where she true. was and how this happened. You know, it, a lot of people wonder why there was a national obsession over Lacey's disappearance. You and I have talked about the fact that pregnant women, a leading cause, if not the leading cause of death among pregnant women is homicide. And in many cases, it's the spouse, the husband or boyfriend, the baby's father responsible for the murder. That's correct. That's if that's the case, and I think we read that 1,400 pregnant women between 1991 and 1999 were murdered, um, why do you think this story, the story of Lacey, captured so much public attention? I've asked that question all along myself. I'm not really quite sure. Uh, we've been told many of the letters and cards that we've received from people just say that she's like their sister, their daughter, uh, the girl next door, and it just makes them think of their own family. It's true. I mean, you see that photograph and other pictures, Sharon, and she just is, you know, her smile lights up the photo as it must have lit up a room, right? Right, absolutely. And there was something I think that people felt drawn to, and in some ways she did seem like the all-American girl. And you all seemed like the all-American family in so many ways. Right. We're no different than anybody else, just average people. Why did you want to write a book? Because the pain that you continue to endure is extraordinary. To relive it must have been almost too much to bear. It was. It was much more difficult than I had anticipated. Um, I wanted to be able to talk about Lacey. Uh, people knew her after her death, but didn't know a lot about Lacey as a person. You also wanted to set the record straight because there were so many things that came out that weren't necessarily true. And this was your opportunity to say, this is how it really happened. This is what really happened, right? That's right. That's right. There were so many things that were misinterpreted or misreported, um, misstated that this was a good opportunity to make you, those corrections. We mentioned that you still talk to Lacey, and you're going to read a, an excerpt from the book sort of about that, if you would. Sure. I still talk to Lacey. There are so many things I still want to say to her. I tell her that I'm so sorry this happened. I'm sorry I wasn't there to protect her when she needed to be protected. I'm sorry I didn't see Scott for who he really is and get her away from him before he could hurt her. I tell her how much I miss her, how much I wish she was still here, able to stop by or call, and how much I love her. You know, I was thinking about you over the weekend, and, and I know that there were some things that raised red flags in retrospect before Lacey ever disappeared. Some of the things that Scott did in his behavior, three days before the wedding, for example, Lacey called you crying and said she didn't want to get married, right? Um, actually, it was the night, it was after the rehearsal dinner. It was about midnight. I received a phone call from her and she was crying. And she told me at the time her, her, 
her concern was that she would lose her ethnic name, but I just felt that there might have been more to it. Uh, we stayed on the phone for quite some time until she finally calmed down, and then, of course, she laughed about it at that time, but... And then, then when she got pregnant, Scott did not behave like someone who was excited to have a baby. He was sort of sullen about it or in a bit of a funk. And she said to you, oh, he's having a midlife crisis. He's turning 30 and having a baby. In retrospect, again, you thought, gee, maybe that should have raised a red flag. Right. It's easy to look back and put everything together, but not at the time. It, it, but, but having said that, I wondered if you felt, as you just read, you wished you could have protected her. Absolutely. Do you, do you feel guilty that you didn't pick up on things in a way that might, I mean, even though that guilt, frankly, may be irrational, but is it there? Um, a little, but I don't, I don't feel a lot of guilt because he did have all of us fooled, not just me. I, I don't feel that I had closed my eyes to everything. I mean, her friends, her family, nobody suspected this would ever happen. December 6th, before Lacey disappeared, about three weeks prior to that, might have been, in your view, a turning point that kind of something in Scott clicked. What do you think happened? I have since read about sociopaths, because I've heard so many people claim that Scott is a sociopath, that they can live normal lives for years and years, and then all of a sudden they may find themselves backed into a corner, and that's when they snap. And, and he I was asked by Sean Sibley on um, December 6th, she confronted him about being married and said that she was going to tell Amber if he didn't. And he begged her not to, to, to give him that opportunity. In my own personal opinion, I feel that was his corner. Because the next day... He started searching the internet for the currents in uh, the San Francisco Bay and the following day on the 8th, he searched the internet for a boat and on the 9th he bought a boat. He also told uh, Amber Fry that he had lost his wife on the 9th of December. That, that, and this would be his first Christmas without, without her. her. How do you go on? I mean, losing your daughter, losing your grandson, and, and I mean, loss is hard enough, but when it's such a violent, senseless, impossible to comprehend loss, how do you, how do you make any sense of it? I don't make any sense of it at all. And as far as going on, I think it's just one day at a time. Um, as many days I get up and I think to myself, how did I make it through that day? And here I go again. Um, trying to possibly help others in any way that I can. Um, that helps. That helps me a lot. I've been helped a lot by others who have been through similar situations. Um, I don't really have an answer for that. It's just surviving. Well, the book is for Lacey, a mother's story of love, loss, and justice. Writing about her, I know, was helpful to you and, and just putting it down on paper in some ways, I guess, made it seem more real. You know, it did. Um, it wasn't therapeutic. I've been asked that. Uh, if anything, I, it did clarify a few things for me. But, and it was very painful. It was much more difficult than I had anticipated. But reading things that Lacey had written, going through her old papers, um, at first it was excruciating, but the more I've read it, it just brings me that much closer to her. I know she's still here with me. Well, Sharon, thank you so much for talking with us. And uh, you might be able to stick around and speak some more with me in the 9 o'clock half hour. We can so. talk a little more about Scott and his bizarre behavior after Lacey's disappearance and the, the very poignant dream you had about her not mm. too long ago. Yes. All right, Sharon, thanks so much. Thank the book you. is for Lacey, and we'll be back right after this.